and Justice Pharmacies 130. And so I'm back with updates from the world of business. Welcome to Business Incorporated. Here's what we have for you on the program today. We have uh, Egypt holding its rate following the Bank of England as well as the Federal Reserve in the United States. And a crackdown on illegal sales of palm oil in Cameroon. We'll also have that story for you on the program. South Africa is set to host a Goa in November. Of course, we'll give you the details uh, by then, but we'll first tease that now. Oh, good afternoon. Welcome to Business Incorporated. I'm Amy John Mekwa, and uh, this is where you get updates from the world of business, uh, beginning with what's going on in the market at intraday. And yes, we can start with the NGX. And we can tell you that at the NGX, it's intraday, there's a recovery from the negative close of yesterday, 0.04%, at 68,299.55. In South Africa, it's also positive 0.56% at 73,650.88. We go to other regions now, starting with Egypt, it's right there, our weather market is closed today. 1.43% in the green is what it closed with. Also, Thursday is closing for Kenya, losing further, going further away from that 100% index point that has become their benchmark for a bit now, down 0.25%, the closing number for Kenya. We still stay with the market. We go to the Middle East there and see what's going on. Uh, we know that two of the markets in the Middle East are closed on Friday, but we'll start uh, with Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi is uh, in the green. Uh, it's intraday 0.07%. Dubai is, however, on the flip side, 0.31% at 4,166.90. We'll go to other regions. Those are the markets that are closed for Friday. Saudi Arabia closed in the red, more than 1% drop. And Qatar well, is on the flip side also, 0.28% uh, in the green as at Thursday. All right, now we go over to Europe and see what's happening in Europe. And this morning we talked about NFTs. It's in the news. <laughs> it's like the hottest thing now uh, when it comes to art in the financial market. Uh, what's going on there? We have Lars Holter joining us to give us the details and why they are concerned. Hi, Lars. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so what can you tell us about how the NFT, we saw that report that about 95% of investment there has now been uh, termed as worthless. Hello, Eni. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, how should I do this? I'm trying hard to look surprised when I tell you that they are all worthless. In fact, the report is titled Dead NFTs, and that's the gist of it. However, of course, there are a few details that the study points out. Let me give you some numbers. Now, the report is by Dap Gamble. That's a community of experts in finance and blockchain technology. And they have looked at almost 75,000 NFT collections, and almost 70,000 of them have a current market cap of zero. In practical terms, that means that 95% of NFT uh, NFT collections aren't worth a penny today. And that's a pretty spectacular crash for assets that reached a trading volume of $17 billion just two short years ago. We all remember the hype back then. Everyone was publishing these non-fungible tokens, digital art that could be copied by everyone. But the idea was that only one person can own the original file or code or whatever it was. It's estimated that some 23 million investors own these tokens that have no practical use or value. As for the cultural aspect of most NFTs or their credibility on the art market, they were often cartoons or computer-generated art that not too many people took seriously. Also, how do you present your collection, print it out or on a screen? You could have done that from any legitimate copy. No need to spend a ton on some pseudo-original. Hmm. So now, if we have a large part of the market without value, what, are, what about the rest? 
Good question. There are indeed some NFT collections out there that are listed with a certain value. Now, you got to remember that at the top of the NFT craze, some of these tokens sold for millions. Today, around 1% of the entire market is said to have a value of more than $6,000. But most of the NFTs that are not entirely worthless are currently listed between $5 and $100. Now, here's another problem, though. It doesn't look like there are too many buyers out there who would even spend that little on an NFT anymore. Supply is vastly outstripping demand. Most collections remain unsold. So any valuation they seem to have is often not more than wishful thinking by the owner. After all, anything you sell is not really worth as much as you want. It's only worth as much as someone will pay you. And in this case, no one is paying. Wow, very unfortunate. I hope this is not slipping into the equities markets. Well, all week has been central bank week, and we've heard similar takes from the U.S. Fed and the Bank of England, both holding steady for now, but signaling more rate hikes in face of ongoing inflation. And this morning, it was an entirely different picture in Tokyo, the Bank of Japan maintaining its ultra-low interest rates and its pledge to keep supporting the economy until inflation sustainably hits its 2% target. The Bank of Japan is suggesting it was in no rush to phase out its massive stimulus program. The committee is saying that it expects the economy to continue recovering moderately. All right, Lars, thank you so much for the week and have a great weekend. All right, let's move to the United States now where stock features rose slightly on Friday. But the market is still poised to end the week with steep losses. Features on the Dow Jones have the numbers right there uh, in the green there at 0.10% uh, in the green. 34,370 S&P 500 uh, is also in the green 0.24%. 4,382.25 Nasdaq features is almost a, a half percent in the green. And uh, these moves followed a three-day losing streak for all three stock averages as investors reacted to a signal from the Federal Reserve that it intended to keep interest rates higher for longer. Investors also became concerned about a government shutdown which could dent consumer confidence and slow down the economy further. With just Friday left in the trading week, the three major indexes are on track for losses. To Asia now, Asia Pacific markets are mixed today with some market pairing losses earlier in the day as the Bank of Japan left its monetary policy unchanged after concluding its latest meeting. It seems that's the tone of a lot of central banks uh, this week and last week, uh, leaving their rates unchanged. Now let's look at the numbers for the close of trade for Asia. Nikkei 225 closed in the red, 0.52% at 32,402.41. The Kospi also read 0.27% at 2,508.13. The Hang Seng Index is, however, on the flip side more than 2% uh, gain at uh, the close of trade, 18,057.54 or 45, beg your pardon. And then if we see the other market, Shanghai also follows suit in the green. And um, in Australia, it's also green. <laughs> And so let's go to the commodities market now. Oil prices rose on Friday as renewed global supply concerns from Russia's fuel export ban counteracted demand fears driven by macroeconomic headwinds and high interest rates. Brand features were up 0.56% at $93.82 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate Trude rose 0.81% to $90.36 a barrel. Both international benchmarks were on track for a small weekly drop after gaining more than 10% in the previous three weeks amid concerns about tight global supply as the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries and its allies, OPEC Plus, maintain production cuts. Russia's government on Thursday said it temporarily banned exports of gasoline and diesel to all countries outside a circle of four ex-Soviet states with immediate effect to stabilize domestic fuel market.
Metals market now prices edge higher on Friday for gold following weak economic data out of Europe and a week of key central banks deciding to stand pat on interest rates, although a stronger dollar kept bullion gains in check. Spot gold was up 0.3% at $1,924.70 per ounce and following three sessions of losses. U.S. gold features rose 0.3% to $1,945.40. The prospect of higher for longer U.S. rate has lifted the dollar to a six-month peak, while benchmark 10-year Treasury yields traded near 16-year highs, keeping bullion gains in check. Investors traditionally buy gold as a hedge against economic uncertainty, but higher rates tend to weigh a non-interest-paying bullion. In other metals, silver gained 1.2%, to $23.65 per ounce and was set for its best week in four weeks. Platinum added 1.2% to $930.29, while whole palladium rose 1.1% to $1,276.80. Well, let's go to South Africa now, and we can tell you that uh, the Reserve Bank Governor, Lachete Kayango, has announced that the repo rate has been left unchanged at 8.25%. Meanwhile, the country's consumer price index edged up for the first time in five months to 4.8% in August. Mr. Katango said that three members of the MPC decided to keep the rate on hold, while two others referred a 25 basis point increase. And the governor warned that the job of tackling inflation is not yet done, and that further hikes could be on the card as risk to inf inflation outlook expands. Longer term market expectations for inflation remain elevated. Headline inflation returned to below the upper end of the inflation target range in June. In coming months, we expect headline inflation to rise somewhat before sustainably reverting to the midpoint of the target range in 2025. Against this backdrop, the MPC decided to keep the repurchase rate at its current level of 8.25% per year. Three members of the committee preferred to keep rates on hold and two preferred an increase of 25 basis points. At the current repurchase rate level, policy is restrictive, consistent with the inflation outlook and elevated inflation expectations. Serious upside risks to the inflation outlook remain. In light of these risks, the committee remains vigilant and stands ready to act should risks begin to materialize. Decisions will continue to be data dependent and sensitive to the balance of risks to the outlook. The inflation and ripping in response to new data and risks. The policy stance aims to anchor inflation expectations more firmly around the midpoint of the target band and to increase confidence of attaining the inflation target sustainably over time. We're still talking about rates uh, in Africa. Egypt has kept its interest rates unchanged amid signs of softening inflationary pressures, likely refraining from further monetary tightening until it manages a much-awaited currency devaluation. The Monetary Policy Committee maintained the deposit rate at 19.25% and the lending rate at 20.25%. Prices have soared as Egypt has struggled through a shortage of foreign currency and repeated devaluation since March 2022, increasing hardship for many Egyptians who have seen their living standards eroded in recent years. 
I guess it's also important to remind you that Nigeria was supposed to have its MPC meeting on Monday, the 25th and Tuesday to 26th. However, the CBN had uh, announced that that has been postponed. No new date has been given. But we'll join the rest of the world with our decisions in due course. Let's take a break on the program now. When we come back, more stories from the African continent right here. Welcome back to Watching Business Incorporated here on Channels Television. Now, the United Kingdom is actively seeking to enhance trade relations with Zimbabwe and make substantial investment in the country's expansive renewable energy sector. According to Mr. Andrew Mitchell, the UK's Minister of State and the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, he's expressed the UK's commitment to removing obstacles that have hindered optimal trade between the two nations. This renewed interest from the UK comes in the wake of the successful engagement and re-engagement efforts by President Mwangwa, which have led to a thaw in previous frosty relations between Zimbabwe and its former colonial power. In response uh, to a question, uh, the Shadow Minister for Environment, Ms. Ruth Jones, uh, regarding plans for economic cooperation between the UK and Zimbabwe, Mr. Mitchell informed the House of Commons that this week that the UK is actively working to open up markets for Zimbabwean agricultural products. He notes that uh, through economic partnership agreements, Zimbabwe companies enjoy duty-free and quota-free access to the UK market and that they are particularly focused on supporting Zimbabwe's export of horticultural products like uh, blueberries and peas, thereby expanding options for UK customers. Additionally, they are working to eliminate barriers to UK investment in renewable energy and technical assistance, which is aimed at enhancing the policy environment, thereby attracting new investment into independent solar power projects. The Cameroonian government is taking action against sales of bulk refined palm oil widely sold on the local market. A statement released by the country's trade minister, LUC Mbaga, as, uh, says that strict instructions have been given for all actors in the oil refining industry to comply with food safety rules comprehensively as well as the specific regulations applicable to each sector. Sources within the palm oil industry have indicated that some palm oil refiners sell the oil themselves in bulk, an anti-competitive practice that enables them to dispose of stocks quickly through informal channels, reduce production costs, and even manipulate tax obligations. Many believe this type of oil poses health risks to consumers. Meanwhile, the government says violators may face penalties under existing laws and regulations. In Nigeria, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry has been highlighting the gains of businesses during previous international trade fairs. On this basis, the chairman of Trade Promotion Board, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry engineer Leye Kupoluyi, is inviting individuals and businesses to the next fair which holds in November. Engineer Kukolui is particularly proud of the Chamber's youth development program. He was speaking at a media briefing in Lagos. In our quest to raise young entrepreneurs, SCCI established a mentoring program. And years after years, we are full graduates of this membership program to exhibit free of charge at our fields. This year, they will be coming in large number to be part of the fair. This is being demonstrated in a way of giving back to the society. For over three decades, visitors normally accept the fair by paying a fee. Last year, the entry fee was real dinner. In celebrating the 135 anniversary, the gates shall be open for three days of the fair for our exhibitor, visitor, 
for access, free of charge. Open gate from Friday, the 3rd of November, the 4th of November, and the 5th of November, free, free, and free. Emphasis on free there. Well, Standards Organization of Nigeria is discouraging Nigerians from the use of non-energy friendly equipment noting that the move would help reduce the cost of consumers that they incur in powering the appliances in the country. The Director General, Standards Organization of Nigeria, Malam Farouk Salim, was represented by the Director of Product Certification, Mr. Tosu, uh, shared this at the commissioning and the launch of AC Bioclimatic Testing Chamber. It's co-founded by the European Union and GIZ in Lagos, Nigeria. It is particularly also exciting that this specialized testing facility is designed for evaluating the performance, energy efficiency, and durability of the conditioning unit will provide a more concert conformity assessment solution in this sector in Nigeria and across the West Africa. On behalf of the DG, I want to assure you that with this facility, and also within the shortest time, like the director lab promises, you will begin to see products coming to Nigeria or manufactured in Nigeria with the energy level put on it. I assure you of that. It's under my jurisdiction. So very soon you'll be seeing the energy level on this particular equipment to assure you, because it delayed due to certain factors, and also we want the consumers to be also fully involved in determining that what they buy is what they need to use and is fit for their purpose. This chamber will provide several significant opportunities in the area of energy efficiency, testing, climatic adaptation, durability and reliability testing, solar air conditioning, refrigerant efficiency, and standard development and training. And now we head to South Africa, where the country has been cleared to host the annual African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA. It's a forum that will be held in November. U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai and South Africa's Minister of Trade and Industry, Ibrahim Patel, made the announcement in a joint statement. AGOA was established in year 2000 to map the way forward for U.S.-SA trade relations. Currently, an additional 34 other sub-Saharan African countries are eligible to benefit from it. There was a push by a bipartisan group of legislators in the U.S. to move the conference to another country because of South Africa's refusal to decry Russia's invasion of Ukraine due to its non-aligned stance. Well, we will give you follow-up on this and give you more details on Agua, especially when it opens in South Africa in November. Now, the European Union and Food and Agriculture Organization have launched a 10 million euros project to support 50,000 vulnerable Ghanaians grappling with food security in some parts of the northern region of Ghana. The project is aimed at economically sustainable and inclusive food systems, empowering communities to build resilient and profitable food production systems and reinforce environmental sustainability of food systems. It's also aimed at enhancing social sustainability and gender responsiveness of food systems and improved governance and institutional sustainability of food systems. The allocated funds will primarily focus on planting for food and jobs for its two target uh, com commodities. These efforts complement the government's initiative to mitigate the adverse impacts of rising food fertilizer and field prices in vulnerable areas to help alleviate poverty, hunger and malnutrition. That's it on Business Incorporated for this uh, episode. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I'm Amy John McWell. Have a great weekend. <laughs>